Well, first off, I refer to opening the Bat Cave as sexual relations now. It was very important for people to come together in July of 1982 to pretend to be bats in a cave in London. Bats and goths have a lot of things in common. We're both dark, we're both misunderstood, we both get in the news for the wrong reasons. That that place had to be lit as hell. I would, oh my God, I, I could picture, like, if I was living in London, me asking my mom, can I go to the Bat Cave? And she would be like, absolutely not. Like, it's, it just sounds so cool. It's, what I love about, like, gothic, like, n when we name things, we make it so mysterious. It's like, I've got to go to the Bat Cave. Like, what, like, what is this place? It's like inviting, but like underground, but you know when you get there, you're gonna feel secure. It was, I was a month and, and 11 days old, and even I knew as an infant how important that moment truly was. It was sort of like our American bandstand moment, uh, but more inside of a, a, a dark London club, but way more cocaine. It was a lot of fun. I love the 80s. Oh, if I could be in a time, it would be the 80s. Iconic bands performed at the Batcave. You have Bauhaus. Southern Death Cult. UK Decay. The Damned. You also have Doc Martin in Soul. Bat Nose. Pleather Will Do. Sex with Death. This eyeliner was a lip liner. Um, cheese Pie. French Dish. Rootin' tootin' good time. A raccoon party, that's who it was. Oh, so underrated. God. How my law practice uh, specializes in goth rights and then also overlapping rights. For example, polyamory, that often discriminated against. Which, which parent is going to show up to the PTA meeting, we don't know, but we do know they're going to be in crushed velvet and leather. Goths are often discriminated in the workplace. You know, they allow dogs in offices, but why can't we bring our support ravens? It started with Dungeons and Dragons. You know, that game that basically wrote Stranger Things, just a device for role play and storytelling. Yet, somehow, people got it in their minds that this would become the gateway to actual Satan, which, if I only knew the gateway to actual Satan, I wouldn't be here right now. It then became part of the satanic panic. If your kids are playing Dungeons and Dragons, then they're gonna end up, I don't know, freebasing cocaine and sacrificing their pets to the devil. It then uh, developed into a full widespread panic. It ended up on Donahue and Sally Jesse Raphael, and that led to parents cracking down on their creative, spooky children and, and telling them, no, put that eyeliner down, no, Take that leather coat off. No, listen to the Osmonds. And they didn't have to. As we know, that is a downward spiral not written by Trent Reznor. You have to allow children to breathe. The more you tell them not to listen to something, the more they're gonna listen to it. One of the interesting turns that the satanic panic took was a book named Michelle Remembers where Michelle remembered lies. It did not happen. It was just a book about how a little girl just was abducted by a satanic cult and tortured by a satanic cult and how she somehow survived and forgot and then uh, a brave hypnotist sort of pulled it out of her brain like it wasn't a complete fabrication. Which by the way are still happening today, <clears throat> Teal Swan. Gruesome satanic rituals that didn't exist. That led to the police, believe it or not, taking satanic workshops that didn't even involve black candles or tarot cards. How can you have a satanic workshop without work, spellcraft, witchcraft, nothing? It was just them talking about how to bully poor goth kids on their way to school. And they continue to do this today. She basically led the entire country into believing that everyone, every little child 
was going to get abducted by the Dark Lord, which would have been better. Most of our parents in the 80s didn't even know where we were. There were commercials that said, it's 10 o'clock, where are your children? Satan would know where they were.